baby's coming out. Like this is happening. My body has taken over. <laughs> Get me to the hospital. Like just let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hi everybody, Katie here from Live It Well Nutrition and today I'm going to share with you my precipitate delivery story. And this is the birth of my son. I'm really close to giving birth to my daughter um, very soon. And so I thought I, this is a good time to share my very low risk but very surprising precipitate delivery in case any of you might be wondering what to expect or what it's like or even just to compare or learn about it. So. Here it is. Um, the night that I went into labor, um, oh, first I'll say precipitate delivery means that active labor is less than two hours. And my active labor was an hour and a half. It was extremely rapid. And so naturally with my second that I'm expecting this September, they're saying that as soon as I start feeling contractions, you go because this the um, births that happen after your first are quicker your body knows what to do and so if I had a precipitate rapid delivery the first time then any birth that I do after that is going to be possibly faster so I need to be prepared for that um, but the night of my contractions um, the inactive labor part just the contractions went on for hours before I went into active labor and I say that because when you start having contractions, it feels very mild, like a like a menstrual cramp. Exactly the same feeling as a menstrual cramp. And at first they're half an hour apart. So you can see how hours might go by because you're only having a contraction every 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, so in the span of like four hours, you're only having a few contractions um, that are mild at that. They were so mild, in fact, was that I was reading um, a neurological book. What's it? It's, um, well, anyway, it's food in relation to neurological health. And I was highlighting as I was reading because I don't know about you, but I like to do that. And so um, I didn't want my brain to be tricking me that I was in labor or having contractions. And so I wouldn't look at the clock. And every time I felt a contraction, I would look at the clock and then write down the time in my highlighter and so sure enough they were very sequenced they were exactly the same spacing apart and then they would um, slowly get closer and closer together and still very mild most of the time it was very mild and so hours had gone by and my husband was working I didn't tell him right away that I was having contractions because he was very busy with work and although he would have loved to know, I let him do that and focus on that. And then later in the evening, I did let him know. So he did come home and and yeah, we were together when I was having my contraction. Still, when he got home at like 11 p.m., um, it, was rel it was just starting to get, it might have been midnight, but it was just starting to get more intense. And by that, I mean just deeper cramps, like menstrual cramps, but that radiate to the lower back, kind of deeper cramps, um, but still very tolerable. I could talk, I could have a conversation. Um, I just knew, I knew that I was in labor. And so, um, yeah, my first contraction happened at six, and then it was like half an hour, half an hour, so not very many contractions for, for a few hours. And then I actually ended up giving birth to my son at like 4.05 in the morning. Um, but active labor was an hour and a half of that. So when they started to get more intense, um, I had a swivel chair. Um, my office was in the bedroom at that time. And so that was really helpful. I kind of swiveled through it and it escalated very rapidly. So at first I was writing down my contractions and how long they were because I know that you don't, you're not supposed to go to the hospital or even call the midwife until they're a certain level in length and spacing apart. So I think it's one minute long and three minutes apart. And then you're supposed to go to the hospital. I'll have to double check that. It's been a while. But um, yeah, so then I had an app that was very nice because it gave me something to do when they did get more intense. 
and um, the contraction started and then you can like start the the app that your contraction started and then stop it when it has stopped they got very long in duration um, and like rapidly closer together and so they I remember at one point it jumped from seven minutes apart to three minutes apart and I was laying in bed thinking I have hours of this ahead of me and I got the shivers and that's something I thought you only get with the epidural but in fact I got them just in <laughs> labor um, yeah labor symptoms so I was like freezing cold teeth chattering cold and during the contractions my extremities weren't working either it was like my all my blood was going towards my middle and like working at getting that little being out of me and so because my body was doing that it literally like I would get pins and needles in my hands and my feet and they wouldn't work when I wanted to move them during a contraction and so I, I was concerned about that we called the midwife she says this is your first delivery don't worry you've got hours and hours ahead of you um, keep me updated but get into the bath and just try to wait it out because you're you're gonna be in this for a long time and so I was a bit frustrated because I knew my body was working very fast um, not expecting this at all I thought I was gonna be you know in a lot of pain for a lot of time and this was just kind of shocking to me I didn't expect it but we went down and Ian my husband drew me a bath a warm bath um, and as soon as I got in it I was only in for a few minutes I got in and just like how you do a crunchy um, and you contract your abs my body did that for me and that's that was scary that was like my body's pushing and my brain didn't tell it to it just did it so I remember being in the bath and then that happened and I just jolted forward which was a surprise to me I did not tell my body to do it and and I, I hadn't eaten anything and I threw up water and I thought this baby's coming out like this is happening my body has taken over <laughs> get me to the hospital and so I said if like just let's go let's go let's go let's go and so my husband was like okay yes we're going like this is it and I had wet hair I didn't care it was March the beginning of March and I think I was still in my I just put my pajamas back on and got right into the car didn't even wait for my husband but he was like quickly he was running <laughs> he got the the bag that we never ended up opening the whole time we were in the hospital and um, got into the car and we just went and on the way we called with the Bluetooth speaker um, I couldn't talk at that point I was in so much pain that even my husband's voice was like overstimulation and made me want to vomit or something like it was just too much stimulation happening all at once and so I was just telling him to be quiet, but he had to talk to the midwife and she seemed kind of reluctant. Like this is something that a lot of people with their firstborns do um, is go to the hospital too early. But I knew like my body was pushing this baby out without me telling it to. And so we were going and she was so nice and she met us there and was very supportive. When we got to the hospital, they were under construction. So the doors were locked. And I just remember like getting there and stopping through contractions just to get to the front door and then it was locked and I was like you've got to be kidding me so then my husband ran back for the car whipped it around and I got in we drove to the other entrance and that was locked <laughs> But it was like a speaker because it was nighttime. So then they immediately buzzed us into the hospital and got me into a wheelchair, signed me in. I was totally out of it. Like I, my husband checked me in. I was head down, contractions, like they were so long in duration and with such little breaks in between. And this was only like maybe an hour hour and a half ago I was like talking through my contractions it was so rapid that it went from one extreme to the next 
and that's what precipitate delivery is that it's rapid and so they they checked my dilation and I was six I was a six centimeter dilated and they said okay this is we got to get you upstairs <laughs> like if you're six already this is actually happening and so they immediately wheeled me like in my wheelchair actually I think I was in a no I, I did get back into a wheelchair and they wheeled me like in the elevator up to the room where I'm gonna give birth and and I remember I remember I didn't push for that long I had the tens machine and I I was saying I want the epidural like I was in so much shock every part of me is against the epidural <laughs> And I knew that I didn't want the epidural, but in all of my research, I learned that it takes hours to actually get the epidural. And so I was in so much pain and I thought that this was the beginning of like 12 hours of labor, honestly. I was like, if, it's, if this is the beginning of labor, obviously it wasn't. This was like, the, this was the crowning moment for me, but I thought this was the beginning. And so I panicked and I was like, I, I can't do this for 12 hours like kudos to moms who do because I cannot be in this state which for us for me was like the, the hardest time but I thought it was the beginning and I thought if the epidural takes two hours to get to me I want that option in two hours because this is like intense so anyway I knew thinking like I didn't want it I didn't want it but in two or three hours maybe I think I might want it and so I wanted the option. So I remember saying that, I just wanna be honest that even and somebody who works as a holistic nutritionist, natural this, natural that, I was downstairs, six centimeters dilated, had just arrived at the hospital. And we went into an elevator and upstairs and my midwife did not even have time to put her gloves on. That's how fast my son came. And he flew out of me, literally, like he flew. <laughs> he popped out. He might have even bounced off the table a little bit. <laughs> um, didn't seem to harm him though. <laughs> anyway though, that's how fast it was. And I don't remember pushing very many times. I don't know how many times. I could probably look it up in the file, but I didn't push that many times. Like I said, active uh, labor for me was an hour and a half. It was like an hour and 35 minutes or something and they considered it super low risk, um, no injuries, no nothing. Um, I didn't have any positions. I know some people um, position themselves on their knees. Um, I was on my back. I had the TENS machine, like I said, super low because I really thought for some reason that I had hours and hours ahead of me. And in fact, the epidural did come very fast. Um, the only reason I asked for it was because I heard that it takes like three hours to get to you. Maybe that's just the state. I don't know. But I didn't want it. <laughs> I didn't want the epidural. And it was too close to labor anyway um, that I probably wouldn't have been able to have it. Maybe, but I didn't want it. I, I turned it away because I knew that I didn't want it. I just thought, you know, if this is like 12 hours of this kind of thing, then that's insane. But um, that level of pain is like when you're giving birth. It's actually, they call it the ring of fire. Like if you, if you pull your skin in both directions and you, you have that like burning sensation in your skin, that's what they call the ring of fire. And that's what they say is similar to what you feel vaginally when you're giving birth. But actually, the movement of the baby from your womb down the birth canal is more painful than actually the crowning and the delivery, like the delivery out. And so, at least it was for me. And so, once that was done, um, I just, I, I remember it being wonderful like I had my son on my chest and um, we didn't clean him that was in my birth plan we didn't clean him um, I wanted 
uh, him to come directly to me. I wanted my husband to be skin to skin with us um, and all of that. And so if you have any questions, please comment below or message me. I'd love to answer them. Um, I hope that I mentioned everything that was important. Um, it was a natural birth. I did turn down the epidural, um, but it was very rapid in succession. You know, it was so mild for so long and then boom, like I was having a baby. <laughs> um, so there's that and kind of being your own advocate because in my experience, my midwife as well intentioned as she was, was kind of like this happens to everybody who's having their first child don't worry just stay at home like if i would have stayed at home we would have been delivering in the car or at home because that's how fast it was um and so yeah that's my precipitate delivery story i had a wonderful time with my son i remember all of the hormones i was up all night and the next day didn't even need sleep i was on such a high and I just walked him and cradled him and um, yeah it was wonderful it was that initiation into motherhood that is birth that's birth and delivery and and for me I'm lucky that it's fast um, it could be risky having something that fast because when your body works that fast there can be um, severe tearing down there. Um, for me, there was nothing severe. Um, and yeah, it was a wonderful experience. So I hope that you appreciate and have learned from this uh, precipitate delivery story. If you have any questions or comments, please don't be shy and comment below. I respond to all comments and I'd love to hear from you. I really would. So like and subscribe if you did like this and want to see more. I do mommy topics, nutrition, I'm a holistic nutritionist, and I do zero waste kind of natural living as that's kind of my lifestyle. So I'd love to see you for more videos and take care. Remember, live it well because you only live once. <laughs> Bye.